I'm sorry for saying that you're an average wide receiver, that they eventually will move on. And when teams call me and ask him, should they trade for you? I will say no, don't trade for Jerry Judy because he's mentally unable to handle constructive criticism from people who watch specifically, can he be a wide receiver? He could be a wide receiver, he's a tier three. Um, do we classify that as an apology? <laughs> this is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Mr. Roberto, and we start today on the pitch with the Canadian men's national team. As interim manager Mauro Biello had his first match in charge as Canada took on Japan this morning. And it was a rough go for the new bench boss. Canada fell behind 1-0 in the game's first two minutes, and were down 3-0 by the half. It was a disappointing debut as Canada fell to Japan 4-1 the final. Now joined by our soccer analyst Kevin Kilbane to talk about the match. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Hi, Marissa. How disappointing was this for Canada and Biello's first game as their manager? Well, yes, it's a very disappointing result. Uh, Mauro Biello will know there's a lot to work on, certainly ahead of the next window. Um, certainly him taking over for this game as well, I, I think that will hurt him even more, given it is his first game in charge. But there were positives in that first half. I think up to 40 minutes, they were more than in the game, creating one or two chances. And I think that's what they have to look at first and foremost. But I think they'll look at the defensive frailties. They were so poor defensively, and a lot of the experienced players didn't turn up. What needs to change with this team to get back to their momentum they had before the World Cup? Well, individually, I think the big players, Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, Kyle Lahren, uh, certainly Stefan Astakio, who was missed for this game, he's a, a huge miss for Canada. They've got to get back playing uh, to the level that we saw in, in CONCACAF qualification. But I just think the solidity of the team, I think they've been too open defensively. I think we've seen a number of frailties throughout that side. And I think they just need to get back being a solid group together and stop teams scoring against them like we saw in qualification for the World Cup. Kevin Covain, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It may be their 19th season, and one maybe 36 and the other 38, but tonight for the 66th time in the regular season, it's Crosby versus Ovechkin. And this might be our elder millennial showing, but it doesn't matter how old either of these guys are, this matchup will always feel special. So with only a handful of these matchups left, as both Crosby and Ovechkin are nearing the end of their careers, let's deep dive into two generational stars and their rivalry. Let's start by looking at the stats. And the one thing that stands out here is that huge goal number for Ovi. At 822, he's just 73 away from passing wing. Gretzky for the all-time mark of 894 in a record that we kind of thought may never be broken. It's no shocker that both of these guys though are one and two in active players point totals. What also isn't a shock is just how full both of the trophy cases are, as Ovi's includes one cup, one con Smythe, one Art Ross, three hearts, three Ted Lindsay's, an unbelievable nine Rocket Richard trophies, and of course the one trophy Crosby could never have, that 0506 Calder trophy. While Ovi's trophy case may have more individual accolades, we give the edge to Crosby here because of those three Stanley Cups. But either way, these are two of the most decorated players the game has ever seen. But what does the head-to-head -head look like? Well, as you can tell because of those Cups, Crosby has the playoff edge over Ovi. But in the previous 65 regular season games, Crosby also has the edge, going 38-23-4, while having more points as well, 76-63. And as they meet tonight for the 66th time, let's just appreciate how great these two have been through almost two decades together in the NHL. Because there's not many more of these left. But there is one thing we're wondering. Which career would you rather have had? Crosby's or Ovechkin? And while the simple answer might be Crosby, wouldn't it be better to have the most unattainable record as opposed to two more Stanley Cups? It's tough for me to choose because I feel like there is some Canadian bias there and me leaning toward Crosby and just him being the hockey god for so long in, in my lifetime, being a millennial. But um, Ovi's got that personality that is just so charming. I choose not to vote. <laughs> I definitely danced around that one. I'm not giving a vote. I'm sitting on the fence, baby. <laughs> To the NFL, it looks like there could be a couple of quarterbacks not on the field this weekend. Let's start with Deshaun Watson, who missed week four's loss to the Ravens. But then the Browns went on a bye and everyone figured he'd be back on the field this weekend against the Niners. Well, Watson hasn't practiced all week, and the news just came down. He's officially out for Sunday's game against the Niners with that shoulder injury, with P.J. Walker expected to get the start. On to Daniel Jones, who's also not practiced all week. And earlier today, head coach Brian Dable officially ruled him out for Sunday night against the Bills. Former Bill Tyrod Taylor, who actually made the Pro Bowl during his time in Buffalo, will get the start against his former team. Saquon Barkley, however, has been a limited participant in practice all week, so we gotta think this is the week we're gonna see him back on the field. And you can watch the Giants and Bills Sunday night on TSN at 820 Eastern, 520 Pacific. But make sure to tune in at 7 for Football Night in America. 
we got a Friday Night Doubleheader tonight in the CFL, so let's look at these games with the CFL preview powered by FanDuel. We'll start with Hamilton taking on BC, and this is a big one as far as standings are concerned. BC is still in the running for first in the West, while Hamilton has a shot to host the division semi with Montreal, if they can pass them for second before the end of the season. The Ticats are one of the hottest teams in the league right now. They won five of their last seven, and their two losses came against the same team the Argos, who are arguably the best team in the league. Not only is Hamilton getting hot at the right time, but they've also got Bull Levi Mitchell back, as a legendary QB is making his first home start of the season. Put all this together and you can see why we're looking at Ty Cats on the money line at plus 140, as well as Tim White with over 72 and a half receiving yards. White has gone over that mark five times in the last eight games, and is just over 100 yards away from a new career high. On to the next game as Calgary season is on the line as they take on my Riders. With three games remaining, the Stamps not only need to win this one, but also get another result against Winnipeg and BC in the final two weeks of the season. So yeah, it's looking kind of bleak, Stamps fans. Calgary has lost six of their last seven games, and Saski has lost five in a row. What the heck? So if neither team is really coming into this matchup, particularly in top form, so it's hard to trust either if you're planning on making a wager. And you can watch both these games tonight on TSN. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific with the Lions and Ticats. Then at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, it's the Riders and Stamps. At TSN and Bar Down, we really do believe that hockey is for everyone. And for some, this means the game has to be played just a little differently. We wanted to learn the rules of blind hockey. And what better way to do that than with the players and coaches themselves in this very special edition of Roberto on the Go. You gotta get treats when you know it's gonna be a special day. So we got the dessert, we got the drinks. Apple first from San Ramos? Yeah. It's the, it's, it's, it's the best, no, never. It's the best dessert in the world. It's my favorite dessert. Now that we've got the tone set for the day, let's get this game going. Get what's taking out a chance as well. It's not what you think, it's a blindfold because our goalies in blind hockey need to be completely blind. Check out these nets, these are blind hockey nets right here. So they come up to just beneath my hip. For comparison, these are regular nets and these are blind hockey nets. And check out the pucks. Luke is here to show us the rope. Sam's looking great in yellow, and Vince almost forgot his blindfold. I have a feeling they're gonna kick my ass. <laughs> Vince out there getting some tips from the pro. He's gotta use his other senses out there. There's gonna be a whistle that blows when the puck comes over the blue line heading in his direction. That's the one right there, so let's see him in action. Oh! Okay, so I think it was pretty obvious that Bardon was not gonna win that game or the shootout, but it was a definite win on the day. We just finished playing blind hockey. Well, they finished playing blind hockey. I didn't do anything. Hey, I'm just a fan. Watch out for our full video coming to TSN's YouTube soon. Still thinking of that day fondly. That was so much fun. Cannot wait to run it back and get back together with blind hockey once again. That's all for today. We'll see you back here Monday. Have a good weekend.